days. Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I am still the one, the only Hobo Tom. And it looks like I'll be doing a fighter fest. I'll be doing a no, not fighter fest show. Doing a fight for the fallen show this Saturday night. I'll probably do fighter fest. <laughs> I'm tired. I haven't had my dose of caffeine yet. My evening caffeine get me through. In fact, I have a lot of stuff to do tomorrow, too. Not here to talk about that, though. Well, a little bit about Fight for the Fallen. I think it looks like I'm going to be doing a live stream about that, so that'll be good for you guys. Again, I'll have to figure that out. Again, I am doing my typical WWE Extreme Rules on Sunday, but I'm not here to talk about any of that. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. And, oh, wow. Was that SmackDown good tonight? It's so weird that on uh, one day, ooh, I'm not doing this that, that late. I might take like an hour to chill out, digest my Oreo cookie cake. So good, so good was it. So much of a food coma am I in though right now, and I have to get this done really quick, or somewhat quick. So let's get to the beef of the issue. So uh, Kevin Owens and Dolph, they're in the... Dolph's cutting a promo. Kevin just drives in. Beep, 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 beep. He would not, he would not allow Dolph Ziggler. He was very upset at him from last week. And the Singh brothers were in the background, along with Curtis Axel. Whoa. They had to break up the fight between Kevin and Dolph. In fact, Kevin Owens, you got this sh finger sh shaming by one Shane McMahon. Shane said, you're out of here. He, he canceled the main event. I was, gonna, I was thinking, I'm like, this is terrible. But then as SmackDown's music opened, whoa, 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 wait a second. I'm here to talk about something else. Kevin Owens shows up, early PO'd, and he drops a Kevin Owens pipe bomb. That was good. All, all that was missing was for him to go to the top of the ramp and just sit down. If he did that, Kevin Owens pipe bomb. That's going to be the video. That's going to be the title of this video anyway. Uh, he was just upset. He started dropping names. It's like, listen, Buddy Murphy's not wrestling. Cedric Alexander finally got on TV. Uh, mentioned a couple other wrestlers. I forget who offhand. Don't don't even get on TV. And and, and Shane McMahon, you hog all the airtime. It was Kevin Owens. Or thank you, Owens. One of the two. The crowd was the crowd was mixed about what to what to chant, I think. So after that truly amazing promo, that pipe bomb esque promo. Get to our first match of the evening. They're going to do a promo like that to start off every show. Oh, wait. I don't want it every show. Because when it happens every couple shows, it feels more special. It's definitely good, though. Uh, so the first match of the evening, we have Shinsuke Nakamura. I thought he was surfing somewhere around Tampa. I guess not. Versus Finn Balor. You know, when I lived up in Manchester, New Hampshire... I know it was near the ocean. I forget what town was on the ocean, though. Maybe he's surfing up there in New Hampshire. Who knows? Those North Atlantic waves, a little bit different than Florida, than the Florida part of the Atlantic. But nonetheless, he took on Finn Balor. And, oh, this was a good match. This was probably the closest WWE will ever come to having a New Japan-esque match. It was hard hitting, heavy striking. Again, almost New Japanics. Like, uh, he did that new sliding German. That looked good. I don't know what he picked up. Then he did a second row knee strike? Where was this Shinsuke? He, it was, he was good when he faced AJ Styles, but it seems he really dialed it back. Now they're saying 
No, we want old Shinsuke. And he's had the time to rest up, which 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 is what actually some WWE wrestlers need. I know um in New Japan it's it's a much more taxing style, but there's only like a show every so often. And it's not like the whole WWE travel schedule and everything. So this was good. Um Shinsuke was determined to win outside the ring. The Kinshasa outside the ring, a lot of outside the ring action, throwing like literally ragdolling poor Finn and Balor against the ring posts and the barricade. Eventually he gets in first. And just as Finn Balor, I think, for the third time slid into the ring right before the nine count. Right before the ten count, I'm sorry. He hit him with a Kinshasa. One, two, three. Shinsuke Nakamura won. I hope this really sets up something spectacular for SummerSlam. I don't think they're having a match for Extreme Rules. I'll probably find out more so Thursday-ish. Let's take a look at when the match card comes on. Wow, I do need that injection of caffeine. So we'll see what happens, but this, I'll tell you what, this was a good surf and turf quality match. Um, then we had more Shane. Um, the crowd was voicing their displeasure a little bit. Um, Drew, again, he's a heel that makes sense. Dolph Ziggler's there. And <laughs> this has Dolph and Dolph. Ziggler versus Drew Rome first Dolph Ziggler versus Roman Reigns. And like as Dolph's walking away, Drew's like, Yeah, he, he, he's alright. Like, oh like Shane's like, Oh, that was a great idea. And Drew's like, Yeah, man, Drew's all right. Dolph's alright. Then we have one of the best promo people in the business, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. One of the best promos ever. And then there was a Nikki Cross and Bailey contract signing. Did not use the table, though. I was kind of disappointed. And Nikki Cross signed for both, even though it looked like she, she shined across the entire page. But listen, you don't have to write in Scottish either, okay? And this time she was wearing a T-shirt, so she would not come unzipped. Unlike last night for Raw. Then we have the match between Nikki Cross and Carmella. And then, whoa, that was Rainbow Carmella that came out. Um, eventually, it just, just led to Nikki just like stomping a mud hole into poor little Carmella. And really just beat her down for most of the match. Again, typical heel tactics. And Byron. There was some banter about, oh, how Alexa is not a true friend. Byron said, Alexa is not a true friend. Corey Graves retorts, you, you believe, you believe your girlfriend when she goes to the gym. At, you actually believe your girlfriend when she says she's going to the gym at 11 p.m. Wait a second. I go to the gym at 11 p.m. Byron sex. Be careful. Actually, I'll be getting there probably about midnight-ish. Uh, Carmella slapped Nikki Cross in the face. Do not want to do that to Nikki Cross. Eventually, uh, Nikki Cross almost got rolled up, but she kicked out of that, which is good because roll up victories are good every once in a while. But when you see him tough, you're like, meh. So then, eventually, Nikki Cross did hit her shake, rattle, and roll the, tw the um, sw swing neck breaker. Pin Carmella for the one, two, three. Stared directly at Bailey when she did it. It was a good burger match. Oh, hi Tyrone. Just wanted to say hi. And I always like to read those signs I have in the crowd. Sometimes they're funny. And then they finally mentioned the Kabuki Warriors. I guess they were in Japan. They took on Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, the Iconics. 
I caught it! That's, maybe that's a little bit better pose. I can't tell. As you're looking up here, I can't see. I caught it! There we go. Last time I'll try. I'm probably terrible at it. They beat them in Japan. And then we have a face time between Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Billy is sick or something. Shenanigans? Yes, yeah, shenaniganitis. Um, then the Kabuki Wars and Paige just slaps Billy on the face. Wow, she did not hold back on that. And I didn't realize how much taller Paige was compared to both Kyrie Sane and Asuka. She's just like, has her, she's like at least six to eight inches because she's just like, yep, these are my friends. It's like, whoa, Paigey Wagey. <laughs> And then, um, <laughs> Kevin Dunn, we have a Kevin Dunn botch. It's a botch! Oh, Manchester! Don't you dare be sour! Clap for your never WWE Tag Team Champion, Hobo Tom! And feel the power! Because Kevin Dunn hit that button a little too quick. Uh, so Biggie came out. Biggie, I don't know what he was doing in the back. He mentioned things like threesome, having their gold-plated champ championship tips touch each other. Whoa! I don't want to see any part of that. Whoa! I don't think Xavier Woods gotten quite over the shame of being on the page sex tape. Be careful. Here's, here's words to the wise, folks. Be care. Be very careful what you put out there in the video. It may come back to get you. That's why it's. I'm just me. If you're in the hobo office, every so often you'll see the hobo cat come over there. My hobo kitty. It's probably lying on the pool table in one eye. Or in her, ch or in my chair, by the TV. This is well, it's her chair now. Enough about that nonsense, though. Uh, then Daniel Bryan comes out. Heal who speaks. Otis Tosovich. Ah, he sounds. Tucker Knight cut a really good promo, and Otis does a better Big E imitation than Big E does. Uh, then this, because this set up the the summit. Uh, Otis Stozovich versus Daniel Bryan versus Xavier Woods. <sighs> I'm torn on this because this was actually another really fun match. Uh, Daniel Bryan again, he's smart. He's gonna let the, the Xavier Woods and Otis beat up each other a little bit. Um, Otis hits a one on two. That means what one, one person picks up two people and drops them down. Double soup. Which was an amazing feat of strength. A lot of good outside spots. Um, eventually, the people, the outside characters, get involved in Big E and Tiger Nate. They throw Rowan over the table. They stare each other down. The ref says, uh -uh, we're not, I'm not having any of this. Both of you, actually, all three of you, out of here. So, that was a quick way to get to commercial as the kind of the match reset itself. Although, it really didn't because no one really interfered. So they just probably went to commercial as they're, as they're sulking their way up. Oh, I feel shame. So then, and all the outside people get tossed. You have double team on Otis again to make smart. He's the bigger person. <laughs> he eventually gets gassed, though. I mean, Otis is just. Otis catches wood somehow. And Otis was like sweating profusely. And he could tell he's like, oh, Otis Caterpillar. And, he, and Normie, Normie does every weird thing. He's just like, he just drops the other. He's, he's getting gassed there. Uh, Xavier Woods did Gorilla Gut Buster Daniel Bryan, which is pretty cool. And then Xavier Woods eat a pop up power slam. Otis throws of its wins in a really fun match. If this is what this is a preview we're getting for Sunday, Sunday's pay per view is going to be pretty decent, pretty good, I think. Because this in itself was a surf and turf match.
Emmer Moon's a catering van um, and confronts Mandy, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. And Mandy says that loss brought Mandy and Deville a lot closer. So we'll see what happens there. You always have to be a little bit leery when WWE does these kind of storylines. Because they've been known to semi straddle hemi cross that line. It could be interesting though. I'll I'll give WWE this much. The fact that we have not seen one of those angles before, or it's been a long time since I've seen it. People much younger than me have not seen those angles before. It could be interesting. We'll see. Draw some minus to the TV set. Alistair Black's in the back, ready for his promo. Steamly dressed. Looks like he came out of the Brooks Brothers in New York. Very nice. Mustafa Ali still thinks he's Batman. And Alistair Black. He now knows who's his, who his first opponent is going to be Cesaro. Another sharp dressed man. That's going to be good. I wonder. It would be neat to see if Cesaro does the kind of semi Naito when he comes to the ring. That would be pretty good. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin. And it's just like he hears like voices. And then he was going to say something, and then he got cut off. So I don't know what was going on with that. That was uh, the main. Uh, Paul Heyman just walked on by as Charlie Caruso was getting ready for a promo, and Kofi Kingston shows up. Kofi gives standard promo. Not bad. Getting things ready. Then we have our main event of the evening. And it seemed time just right. It was about 10 minutes. Roman Reigns versus Dolph Ziggler. Eh. Dolph's overselling. It was a slow, deliberate pace, but in the first part of the match, it was just slow, very deliberate. It wasn't rest hold mania, which is always a good thing. Yeah, I understand that it has to be the rest hold so that Roman Reigns can kind of hulk out, begin to hulk out and reach the crescendo and get that huge pop of energy he needs. Roman Reigns, to his credit, did kick out the zigzag. And again, it was the first time in a while where Roman Reigns actually hit the drive on the outside. Of course, you had Drew McIntyre and Elias, along with Shane, on the outside kind of being a distraction. And wow, I tell you what, Roman Reigns has to be lucky that Elias and Drew McIntyre are that tall. And that's strong to catch him because he almost flew over them when he did that crazy dive. That was awesome. And of course, Shane McMahon got in the ring. He's like, yeah, we started to trash talk. He's in the ring, so the really couldn't do anything. But then when the ref was trying to, to get Roman Reigns and Dolph back in the ring, <laughs> Kevin Owens hits the stunner on Shane McMahon, <laughs> a la Don Cole Vinny Mac style. Kevin Owens stole the show, folks. This was still a good quality cheeseburger match. And that was raw. That was I was not well, that wasn't raw, that was SmackDown. This, this was fun. WWE needs to get to the point where they're a little bit more there's a little bit more continuity. And a little bit more consistency because you can't have a show when Raw's up here, SmackDown's down there. Then the next week you can't flip flop it because then the average is still there. You want both shows to be up here. Well, that's my only thing. There's no consistency between shows. I'm sure other people will say that, and I'll get to listen to what other people say tomorrow. As far as what I'm doing, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday is my day off. So Wednesday is my day off from wrestling, so I get to just well, we'll go to work and or, or figure out something to do. Thursday, I'm going to have a dual prediction show. 
I'm going to figure out the Fight for the Fallen card, and I'll make my predictions for that. And then we'll have a little break, which is something I haven't done in a while. And I'll have a Extreme Rules predictions. I kicked that, that, that loser Dr. Tom out of here for, for one prediction show. And then Friday night's going to be Impact Wrestling again. It's going to be my red wine and pizza. While I, while I watch, comment, and just stare and talk at Impact Wrestling, because actually three, le- three, three wrestlers are on the way out of Impact. Johnny Impact, I think, contract already expired, but he wanted to, he, he went out the right way. Unlike that loser Austin dork. And LAX. Uh, Hamasa, Santana, and the other guy, Tito. I forget. I just know them as LAX. Because I've been watching Impact that long. They're also gone from Impact. So that's probably why they dropped their belt so early. So we'll see. LAX might go to WWE. Johnny Mundo. Johnny. I don't know what his name would be, but he should go to AEW because I'm not too sure if he burnt the bridges at WWE when he was John Morrison. He can he's still an amazing wrestler though. Again, just not that good of a heavy of, of their main champ. AEW doesn't have any mid card belts yet. Ooh, I wonder if they could have like an around the world champion. So that should be Johnny Mundo. Yeah, he can come back. Johnny Mundo, I think. Honestly, forget. Forget what his contract status is in Lucha Underground for being Johnny Mundo, because that whole that whole thing's a mess. And then again, unless something. Really tremendous happens in like 48 hours. I'll be here doing my RRR show for Fight for the Fallen. And then Sunday I'll do an RRR show 